What's going on guys? Welcome back to another episode of Trick 10. Today we're starting a new project. This is a low roughneck 1860. It's a good sized boat. Coming off of that 2072 Tracker Grizzly, it seems a lot smaller than it actually is. This customer has already done a lot of work to this boat. He fishes with the ROLS and the electric only fishing tournaments. So he's got an electric outboard motor on here. He's got tons of batteries in here. and He's got more batteries we're putting in here. The whole thing's gonna be full of batteries. It's gonna be a sweet boat when it's done. Not my normal cup of tea. I don't like carpet. It's one of those things, it's just a pain in the butt. You gotta deal with glue. There's some thick glue behind this. So we're gonna have to dig all this stuff out. First stage of the game is going to be demo. Now, like I said, this normally wouldn't be a boat that I would work on just for the simple fact that it does have a ton of carpet in it. But I've already had this guy on the books for almost two years, so he's finally got his chance and I'm gonna make something happen for him. He wants to do an all out build. It's gonna be a little bit different than most of my traditional builds just because of the setup of this boat. It's an older boat. I'm not exactly sure how old it is. I can't even read the numbers on the back of the HID tag, but I'm thinking it says a 2012 and that makes sense. But it's a good sized boat and he's got lots of electronics going into it. Lots of big money going into the build. So it should be a fun project. Austin's back to help me out with this project again. So it's time for us to make the magic happen. We're gonna pull this thing in the shop. But we got a lot of demo to do. All this carpet has got to go. We're gonna take this thing down to bare bones and we'll start building. Let's get back to work. All right, so as much as I hate carpet, this boat actually has some pretty nice carpet in it. But we gotta tear all this stuff out of here. He does have a big 12 inch Garmin here. Got another 12 inch Garmin he dropped off. Got the Garmin Force trolling motor. Thing's sweet. The bracket it's on is trash though. I'm gonna rip that thing off. It's got this little like deck in here. I don't know why they didn't bring it over to the side because this is kind of like a trip hazard. I would probably step in this and break my ankle right in the middle of fishing day, but uh, Anyways, all this is going. We're getting this out of here. This is a live well that he had in here. And it's not very big. And he's been losing some fish in here. So we're getting rid of that too. He's gonna have a kind of traditional setup with a rod locker and then you know a couple hatches and a live well, electrical panel hatch. Similar to the way I do all my builds. This is a big like piece of two by 10 or two by 12. This is just carpeted wood. He just threw that in there because with the outboard, he's got these crazy little controls over here. And basically that's his throttle and he's got a power on and off for it. And that's how he controls the outboard. So in the electric only world, they don't need to sit here and hold the outboard. They can just control it from the front pedal or from the little control like that. The outboard that's on here is crazy. I've never seen anything like this. It's called a Carvin. This is actually from Russia. This thing has an electronic steering on here. This is not hydraulic, it's electronic. And this thing has actually got a ton of power for the size that it is. It can be run up to 48 volt. And uh, it is weird looking though, man, my God. But he did order this from Russia, had it shipped to the States. I'd open this up and show you, but I can't until I get this thing lowered down. But he's got four lithium batteries inside of here. We're going to end up cutting some hash holes in here and dropping some more batteries up inside of here. And we're probably, we're going to do away with this piece, obviously, but I think we're going to extend this deck forward and throw some type of another storage compartment up in there. But Austin's already getting busy. We got a lot to do just to take all this stuff out of here. And we got to have to reuse all these electronics and stuff. So we're going to try not to mess any of those up. But yeah, check this thing out. That thing is pimping. Super crazy. Watch this. I'm going to turn it on. What in the world? Austin, come put your finger in this thing. Dude, look at my shirt. 
<laughs> it's got a lot of uh, power. You throwing tissues into it? You better stop. That thing's going to blow up. That's crazy, man. That's not something that I'm used to, but uh, it's loud. It's got a lot of power, so it's pretty cool. This is like his little key fob for it. Turn it off and on right here. And these are all 24 volt lithium batteries. And then we've got another lithium battery right here. I mean, these things weigh nothing. Pretty cool though. I've never seen these lithium batteries before, but it does come with a couple different ports on it. And that one's just a cigarette lighter, USB. So pretty cool. All right, we're gonna tear all this stuff out of here. Let me know when you get done with it, Austin. Bye. <laughs> Let's get back to work. All right, so we got all of this carpet out of here. This stuff is gonna be a pain in the butt. This is literally like one of my worst nightmares right here. This is why I don't mess with carpeted boots. Cause this stuff was put in with some trowel on glue and it's gonna be hard to get off, extremely hard. This is what I had to deal with when I went to Texas and me and Rob Turklow were scraping this glue off this boat and we looked at each other and, and I was like, man, we will never do this again. And here I am doing it again. Anyways, Austin just took this live well out of here. You go there making some noise, but I wish all of this boat looked just like this metal right here, man. This would make this job so much easier and cleaner, but this is what we got to deal with. So we're going to start scraping this stuff off of here. Hopefully it comes up and it's not too bad of a deal. We've got some more spots down here that we're going to have to repair. This is just you know, 10 years worth of transducers that have been put on here. So might as well go ahead and fill all this up and get all this cleaned up before we start putting all this new metal into this boat. We got a lot to do guys, let's get back to work.
All right, guys, so we've been busy. We got most of this foam dug out of here. You still got a little bit over there. That's the new guy. He's, he's having fun with that, but we did have to cut out the front of this deck up here. I'm gonna show you that in a second, but another thing I wanna tell you guys is, this is a V bottom boot. Now, it's not a humongous V, but it is. And that's something that some of you guys have been asking for. It's something that I've never built one out of. So there's a lot of things in this that are definitely outside of the wheelhouse, but it has a V floor in it, which is gonna be fun to deal with too. And then this deck up here, this was a humongous pain in the ass because originally I was going to try to leave this. And I had to cut this side out regardless because we're going to run his ride locker up this side right here. Uh, I started looking at it though, and this deck is a whole lot lower than this back bench seat is. Now you can see this back bench seat obviously has a three by one tubing up on it. And that is pretty level with what we've got here. We decided to go ahead and run another three inch tube vertically here to give us that space because I want to keep this whole deck streamlined from the stern all the way to the bow, vice versa. So this is going to make that happen. We're bringing it up three inches here. The only thing that sucks about this is these side panels though. I was originally looking at these and I was thinking about cutting these off and making this all streamlined. But unfortunately the ribs are inside of there that come up the side of the hole and they come all the way up here, like literally a half inch away. So there's no way that I'm going to be able to do that unless I cut this off and cut all them ribs down and then redid it. So it's going to stay like that. But by bringing this up, it brings it up to this corner. So it's not much that so you're going to see this back bench is going to be left the way it is. You can see it on this side. So it's not terrible. I will come back and cap this off at least. And then we'll just run our turf up to it and then pick up there. It's going to be a little different, but we're going to make this happen. Right now, Austin is bending this piece right here. It's going to go up on the front across here and that's going to allow us to come back from there and start framing this front deck in. It's basically going to be an angle, runs across the front. We're going to shoot a couple of rivets in here, frame out the rest of this deck and then we're going to take this thing out, flip it over and weld it from the back side. Now, like I said, this side is the rod locker. The center is just going to have a recessed foot pedal tray and I might throw a smaller hatch here or I might just cut out the hole in the face of this. That way he can access that storage space that's up inside of there because there is some good room up inside of there. We got a lot going on, guys. This boat is not going to build itself. Let's get back to work. All right, so check it out guys. We did a lot of work in this first video. This is how his whole deck is gonna be set up. I mean, it's pretty much finished up as far as framing goes. We're gonna have a big hatch here, hatch another hatch here, a hatch here, it's gonna be for like tackle. This is the rod locker hatch, it's gonna go in here. Inside of this box frame right here, it's gonna be drop down. We're gonna have side walls that come in here. This will be the only floor he's gonna have in the entire boat. Then this is gonna be a little day box here, live well, big storage box here. This one's gonna be on gas pistons and open up and it's gonna house all his batteries up here. He's gonna have some batteries that are going to that back bench seat back there. He's also gonna have three batteries in here that are gonna control the trolling motor. And then in front of that, we had to bring this whole deck up up here. Now you can see how this deck stopped way down there. We brought that up another three inches. 
That way it keeps everything streamlined going all the way from one end of the boat to the other. And we had a lot of framing to do up here, but you know, that's what happened. We had to do it, so we did it. And this is gonna be basically a storage hatch here. Seat post base pedestal is gonna mount right here. And then his foot pedal tray is gonna be in there. And that foot pedal tray is gonna slide probably all the way forward up in there. But it looks really good, it looks cool. We're not gonna put any hatches over here. Obviously we got the rod locker sleeve pan inside of here. And we're just gonna continue on with this wall all the way back into the back of the boat back here. And that will finish off this whole rod locker. It already has the side and the floor. Crappy thing is, it's all sticky. It's got this glue all over it. If you guys wonder why I don't mess with carpet, well, this is why. I hate it and it just makes everything a mess. I and mean, it gets all over your clothes while you're working on it. It's impossible to get all this stuff off and it's just not something that I'm gonna do. So don't ask me to work on your boat. It's got carpet in it unless you're prepared to remove it all. Thing looks sick though, man. This will be a sweet build. I'm gonna throw a electrical panel hatch over here. It's gonna control everything in the boat, all the lights, all the pumps, everything like that. It actually turned out really cool, man. I'm digging the way this thing looks now. At first I was a little wary because it's not like my normal boat builds and everything is a little bit different. I hate these side pieces that stick up, but it's not gonna look that bad. We're gonna turf this entire boat all the way up to the gunnels. We have no choice because I'm not gonna get all this stuff scraped and painted inside of here. So we're gonna turf everywhere that carpet was when he brought me the boat. That way we don't have to worry with cleanup anymore. I'm pretty much done with cleanup. The thing looks really cool though, man. It's gonna be a sweet build. My first V bottom. Austin was killing it. Help me get this thing framed out. We'll be building some hatches in part two, getting the live well installed, and maybe getting on to some electrical work. But all in all, project is turning out sick. I don't know if you guys saw it, but Austin did get a new Everlast machine. We were playing around with that green one. The thing is pretty nice too, man. So he is ready for some work. All right, so I'm not going to lie. I wasn't thrilled the first time I saw this boat. Didn't think this project was going to be up to the level that I wanted it to be, but now I'm getting kind of excited about it. The framework that went into there was a little bit tricky, but the layout is gonna be elite. It's gonna be a sick build. It's an 1860, so this is a pretty big boat. This thing's got a lot of room in here. He's gonna be fishing a lot of electric only tournaments, so he needs to have tons of storage for his batteries and his layout. I think it looks spot on. I appreciate you guys watching. Hit that like and subscribe button. Leave a comment. If you guys want any work like this done, you can send me an email at tricktensjohnboats.com. If you want Austin to do something for you, hit him up. I'm going to leave his link in the description of this video. I'll see you guys next time. i to get back to work.